Liam Lee's 011 Air is one of the most awaited cases this year, first shown at CES in January. The 011 Air is advertised as an airflow-focused case, the counterpart to the 011 Dynamic. This is done by removing the tempered glass on the 011 Dynamic and instead opting for two intake fans in the front and a grill. Our performance test results for the O11 Air might surprise you though, as you'll see in today's review. Before that, this video is brought to you by the EVGA CLC 280 liquid cooler. People ask me how I keep cool during the summer with all this hair. Well, I've tried a lot of different products, and few do exactly what I need. Many of them cause tangles or worse. EVGA CLC 280 helps keep my core temperatures low during hot benchmarking sessions. The CLC 280 is price competitive and focuses on performance for value, offering a 280 liquid cooler at an affordable price. Get yours at the link in the description below. Hair mounting kit sold separately. The O11 Air next to me is the same internal tooling as the O11 Dynamic. We like the O11 Dynamic pretty good amount. You can find our review on that one for the full details on the internal, the layout, the build quality and all that stuff. It's more or less the same here, except for differences in the stock fan configuration and clearly differences in the ventilation setup. So the front panel's changed, the top panel's changed, and they're going for a more airflow focused push. The O11 Dynamic uh, also shipped at a price of about 100 bucks on pre-order. I think it's like 130 these days. Whereas this case ships at 120 to 130, give or take, with two fans included. And then there's also a model that's an extra 30 or so dollars that comes with three uh, additional fans. So it should be five total as we understand it, but check the spec pages when it all goes live because uh, that's been kind of in flux since we first saw the cases. So that's the setup. I think the more expensive one is called the Lian Li 011 Air RGB, and this one's just the 011 Air. So for the setup stock, it comes with two fans in the front, they're 120s, and for the most part, this should be a pretty decent performer, but as you'll see later on, there's some interesting play going on with the dust filter on the case, something we've seen in the past. Other core changes include the front end now can support three 120s or two 140s, the nature of getting rid of the glass. You can put two 80 millimeters or one 92 millimeter in the back over here because they only added in new threaded holes for, or just holes to drive a screw through that were not there before. There are two included 120s at 1500 max RPM for the base version and the RGB version comes with these three Bora light fans, which also max out at around 1500 RPM, give or take 10%. As for build quality overall and build features, the vertical GPU mount has been uh, more or less gotten rid of. I mean, it makes sense with an air-cooled version of the case. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to put an air-cooled dual axial card up against the glass. The O11 Dynamic, as we showed you, is capable of actually doing pretty decent GPU temperatures, even when vertical, because it seats it back so far. But for this case, we just tested it in the standard horizontal configuration. And then the top of the case, one of the things we liked about this setup was how easy the panels are to remove. That's all the same as the Dynamic. It's two thumb screws in the back, the top slides off the rail, and then there are uh, there's exposure to the side panels, which we removed here. But for the side panels, you just push it up like this one. No screws or anything, it just pops up. So that was something we actually really liked with the Dynamic, and we still like it with the Air, if you missed the original review. Comes with a dust filter in the top, no fans on the top stock, and the dust filter is something we'll talk about a whole lot in a little bit. The front panel has two screws in it, we've pre-removed them, and then it just sockets off as well. The front panel, the problem I've had with this is it is a little bit annoying to put it back on. So it's difficult to line it up because uh, there are two notches down here, you line it up with the front and sort of just socket it into place. Not the biggest deal in the world, but it does take a few tries to really get it right and make sure it's flush on all sides. Can definitely be improved, but doesn't necessarily need to be improved if you follow there. The front panel, there's your dust filter there that uh, causes issues we'll be talking about. And then also the front panel, uh, actual plastic panel, has a large amount of plastic in it. I mean, it's, it's probably 50% plastic and 50% holes. So not a ton of ventilation through the panel despite being called air. However, we tested it without the panel and the thermal difference is insignificant. That's because of the dust filter and again, uh, give me a moment to get to that. A couple of quick notes on building and kale management, things like that. For taller graphics cards like this one, for the extra height cards, FTW3, Gaming X, uh, some of the ASUS cards like the Strix ROG cards, 
those taller cards are just tall enough that with cables plugging into the top of the card rather than the side, it does actually bump up against the glass. This is a weird instance where the EVGA power link might actually be useful. We typically don't really find a whole lot of use for it, but you could use it in this one. So that pushes against the glass, not a deal breaker because you can still close it, but very close to being a deal breaker. There are a couple, maybe like an extra millimeter would have been nice just for that security. On the upside, tail management is really easy in the back of the case. So this is something we talked about with dynamic, but as a refresher, because it is sort of double wide in the back, it has to accommodate the power supply in the left chamber. So because it has to accommodate a full PSU width, that gives you that same amount of width for managing cables. There are plenty of cable tie points. There is a cable management bar back there, which also supports drives. And that means it's very easy to do a clean build if you wanted to be neurotic about your cabling. You could do it with this case and be pretty happy with how it looks and how it's all managed. You can also very uniquely remove the drive cage in the back and instead do dual power supplies. Probably not something you're gonna use. It's a single system case, but for someone who did want to use it, like maybe Der Bauer, who helped design the case because he does high-end overclocking, for someone like him, it does actually provide a useful feature that you can't really get many other places. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, other than that, all the other stuff, it's the same as the 11 Dynamic. Check that review for more information on those. There's great attention to detail overall. It just comes down to how well does this thing cool because we still like the build quality a lot. We still like the layout and the size, the form factor. This thing is like really not that much different from the 280X in size, which is a micro ATX case, and this is ATX. It's not that different from the H200 in size. So if you're buying one of the larger ITX cases, we really think you should consider the O11 series because it's not that different in size and it's way better overall in build quality. But let's, uh, let's get through the thermals here. So as always, thermals and noise testing, you can find the test methodology in the description below and our test bench is in that article as well. We'll start with torture testing. We have a whole lot of extra tests for this one with the filters removed, panels removed, and things like that. Starting with just the Lian Li O11 Air, torture testing places CPU performance at an overall unimpressive 50 degrees Celsius over ambient. As you'll see in our comparative chart in a moment, there's nothing particularly special about this result. It's okay, but not great for a case marketed at airflow. Removing the plastic front panel didn't change a whole lot despite being so heavily filled with plastic. It dropped us from 50 degrees to 49 degrees within reasonable margin of error. We next removed the magnetic dust filter, running with no filter and no front panel. This is where we saw a big change. The new result plotted 41.5 degrees Celsius over ambient, a steep 9 degree reduction from the stock test. We've seen this before in other cases, like the Thermaltake G21, where the dust filter is responsible for significant airflow restrictions. We had two final tests here, one with a single exhaust fan added, one of the Bora Light fans, which dropped us to 47.7 degrees over ambient, not really impressive again. The last test was with three fans added, one top exhaust, one side intake, and three front intake. In this setup, CPU performance didn't improve in any measurable way, so we'll have to look at GPU performance for a comparison. Comparatively, for CPU thermals, CPU performance is impressive when the filter is removed, but only then. Removing the huge impedance of the filter brings us to 41.5 degrees Celsius over ambient, which is superior even to the long-standing leader that is the Silverstone Raven RV02. Unfortunately, because this performance isn't achieved with stock settings, we can't give the O11 Air our best of bench award. Silverstone retains that. The leading performance is derived from close proximity between the CPU fan and the intake fan, good exhaust avenues overall, and good intake positioning. Performance is exceptionally competitive and impressive once the filter is removed. It's good enough that the O11 Air does become the best performer on our bench, which is a high bar to clear. With the filter installed, the O11 Air falls to 50 degrees over ambient between the half x and 570x at 1550 RPM. The O11 Dynamic with three side intake fans also performs about equally to this degree. GPU torture temperatures for only the O11 series are now on the screen. The O11 Dynamic with three side intake fans and a vertical GPU position far back performed the best, a phenomenon that we explained in our O11 Dynamic review. This result is within the margin of error of the O11 Dynamic with three side intake fans and a horizontal mount. 
The O11 Air, the new one, performs equivalently without any front filter as it does when keeping the filter and installing extra intake fans and an exhaust fan. The stock O11 Air is, again, not impressive at 50 to 7 degrees over ambient, but it does look pretty good once you remove that filter. Comparatively, for GPU torture, the O11 Air lands toward the bottom of the GPU torture performance tests when in stock configuration. The case is comparable to the Define R6 and 805 Infinity and isn't all that far from the absolute bottom. It's getting embarrassed, really. Removing the filter changes everything and propels the O11 Air to the top 10, right behind the venerable RV02, a good place to be. Fortunately, this is an easy change for the end user to make. All you have to do is remove the panels and then take the filter off. Moving on to the other tests, we'll just be testing the stock O11 Air like we do for everything else. This means that the filter stays on. In Firestrike testing, a stand-in for game benchmarks, the O11 Air gets embarrassed by the G21 and Darkbase Pro 900, respectively a $60 case and a silence-focused case. If we look at the O11 Dynamics performance at 53 degrees, it's clear that there's plenty of room for the O11 Air to chart top, but that filter needs to be removed. As a small aside, the O11 Air does manage to hold one of the better CPU temperatures in this test, but that hardly means much. Blender CPU testing places the O11 Air again toward the bottom of the chart, close to the G21 and Silverstone's PM02, which is the worst of the two primary cases on this chart. Blender GPU rendering establishes the O11 Air just below the halfway point, right around where the H500M mesh and PM02 perform. For noise testing, first note that the filter changes the fan pitch to a higher whine than when the filter is removed. The DBA measurement is the same at 48.3 dBA with fans at max speed, but the pitch worsens. Despite being loud, keep in mind that you can lower the fan RPM and position this closer to 40 dBA, which is our acceptable target. If lowering fan RPM to reduce noise, we'd strongly recommend removing the dust filter to keep competitive performance. This noise output is why the O11 error does so well when unconstrained. It's brute force, but it's still well-designed brute force. The case overall is still really good value at the price, and it's still exceptional build quality. It's just that stock filter really chokes the performance in ways that seem almost impossible for a case that's branded as an air case for airflow and has grills and holes in it and all that stuff. So what we'd recommend is if you do get the case, it's a fine case, and if you don't care too much about dust or you can manage it through other means, just pull the panels off and then get rid of this thing here because this is ultimately what's causing all the problems. And the reason it is causing those problems, if you look at this filter, it's not particularly fine mesh. And the problem with any dust filter like this, Silverstone is a good example of a company that they make a lot of weird stuff. They make stuff that probably very few people ever buy might not be the best business decisions in some cases. But one thing they do really well is invest in filters. So what Silverstone has showed us over the years, what they've uh, really improved on and focused on for like the last Computex even, is getting these metal uh, sort of just everything surrounding the hole, everything but the hole. They've focused on reducing the size of that metal. So there's less and less metal. That means there's less rigidity. So it's not quite as durable. You could push a hole in it much easier, but there's way less impedance. There is a lot less material blocking the flow through the filter. In this filter, it's actually a pretty good amount of obstructing material in the filter itself. So there's not as much room for that air to go through. Uh, it requires higher static pressure. And overall, it's a lot of impedance and obstruction to airflow. And it's all just from this 10 degree reduction on the CPU thermals by getting rid of this thing a cat hair near me. So that's really pretty impressive overall for performance just by removing a filter. And it's the upside here is that this is not a fundamental flaw. It is not an inherent flaw to the design of the case. So you can just remove the filter if it's a concern of yours. When that filter is in there, performance is, you might be disillusioned by it would be the best way to put it because it just, it is not super competitive for an airflow targeted case. Removing it, it does great though. And if you do want a filter, there are other filters. Again, Silverstone makes some really good ones. They make 120 millimeter sized filters. Some of them are, most of them are magnetic. You could buy two of those. If you're concerned about dust, then just slap them right over those two fans and more air will get through those than through this thing. 
So that's an option. But overall, just to be clear here, we still like the O11 Dynamic. We like the O11 Air as a case, just in terms of straight steel, the metal, the chassis, all that stuff, it's well designed. It's just that one thing that's a potential flaw and it happens to be related to the core marketing strategy of the case, but you can really easily fix it. So not a deal breaker, it doesn't nuke the quality of the case because it doesn't require you to cut things apart and do custom mods. You just pull the panel off and remove it if you care that much. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's our feelings over all of it. There's really no point in getting the five fans on this thing, honestly, for our test platform. If your build is gonna be similar to this, you're gonna have a tower cooler and a dual axial cooler for your GPU. So pretty similar in that way. Then just going with the original two fans, removing the filter, that's all you need to do. Don't bother getting the version with more fans unless you really want the RGB uh, effect and the aluminum frame. But if you're doing it for airflow, don't bother. Remove the filter, you'll get basically the same airflow performance as you would with the filter and with five fans, and it'll be quieter than with five fans too. So overall, there's plenty of room to work with here as an end user, just be prepared to do that work. Uh, not really a, a deal breaker either way. Price is still good. It is extremely competitive once the filter is removed to a point of being the best even on our CPU torture chart. So. That's it for this one. As always, go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus if you like our content and would like to help us out directly, or go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our mod mats or our limited edition foil shirt. We are going to be closing pre-orders in about a week on this shirt because we've sold almost all of them uh, to a point of we need to close pre-orders. So get your order in this week if you want it. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.